up here at Wasatch Integrated, and um, I thought it would be a great and interesting story for you guys to see what happened, the conversion process from the old burn plant to what we now call the MRF, which stands for Material Recovery Facility. That's correct. And I'm going to have Nathan Rich, who's the operations director. What, what, I don't know. That's pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> He's good about that. <coughs> you, you guys know how I am with titles. Anyway. I'm going to have Nathan kind of point to the to the operations here, and then we're going to actually take you on a tour so you can see how intense this operation is. So Nathan, you want you mind yes. explaining some of this? Here, yeah, thank you, Mayor. Right. Welcome, um, welcome to uh, uh, Davis and Morgan County's new material recovery facility and transfer station. Um, we, we're doing uh, uh, really three things with this facility today. Um, it's a transfer station, so we're able to transfer material uh, uh, out of the district, but what's really interesting is this is a material recovery facility. So before we transfer our garbage 100 miles to put it in a landfill, we want to pull out all of the uh, recoverable, reusable material from that waste. So as you go through the facility, and please take a look at our website, which is uh, wasatchintegrated.org, and there's a great tour on the website as well. So, so we have a, uh, an in-feed in conveyor uh, uh, that comes off of the transfer station floor. Um, the pre-sort station, we pull off things that we don't want to go through the machine. So if you put a uh, propane cylinder in your garbage can, which we wish you wouldn't, We'll yeah. try to pull it off here. So, or car batteries. So car batteries, yeah. computers, uh, uh, garden hoses, Christmas lights, we'll pull off in the pre-sort. We screen the garbage at two inches, and this machine also opens the garbage bags. Um, one thing to keep in mind is, is we don't get all the garbage bags open, so if you leave your garbage bags open or you put your recyclables loose in the garbage can, we've got a lot better shot at actually recovering that material. Yeah, that was my opinion. To say that too. So we screen at nine inches, then, then minus nine inches goes to another screen where we continue to liberate particles or pull stuff apart and we screen it again at two inches. So now the material is liberated and clean and then we, we run it through a series of optical sorters um, where we have machines that can tell uh, what the material type is and we use the optical sorters primarily to recover paper and non-recyclable plastics and we send those to the cement kiln in Devil Slide and they use that material as, a, as an alternative fuel okay. instead of coal or pet coke that they would otherwise burn to make concrete. So, so we're still doing some uh, engineer fuel, some alternative fuel which is what we did with the waste energy facility. Right, right. Um, and then we have two other optical sorters and they're pulling HDPE and PET, so your water bottles and milk jugs, and those are recyclable, uh, uh, recycled. And then you'll see we pass that container stream through a magnet, so we pull out your steel cans, your soup cans, okay. and then uh, it goes across an eddy current separator uh, which, which pulls the aluminum uh, out, of the, uh, out of the waste stream. Um, Very cool. So, uh, so we, we pull um, uh, cardboard, aluminum, steel, and plastics number one and number two to be recycled. Uh, and then the non-recyclable paper and plastics go as an engineered fuel. And then the minus two inch material, which has a lot of grass and organics in it, uh, uh, eventually uh, we're working with a new uh, anaerobic digester at South Davis County, and that'll go down as a feedstock to make uh, renewable natural gas. Perfect. Well, this is, you can see, this is exciting and, and interesting things, and it's stuff that we can do as citizens as well. So we're going to take that tour and then come back and we'll do a quick recap. adventure there and saw all the moving pieces and parts and what it takes to kind of 
deal with our garbage. If there's a lesson that I learned, and hopefully you learned as well, is first off, on our trash bags, let's not tie them tight. It's okay to have a plastic bag liner, but try not to tie them when you go to put them in your trash cat bag, because you can see it will get hooked up in there with all those moving parts. Particularly if it's your recyclables. Yes. Yep, so put your recyclables in loose. Okay, so you heard Nathan say that. The other thing I learned from this is with your water bottles. If you were like me, you always, once you finished drinking them, you wanted to crush them because you thought it'd take out less space in your trash can. Well, guess what? That doesn't work as well with this system. So if you leave them uncrushed. Yep, and cap just caps off because then they don't have water in them. So if they have water in them, they're too heavy and we can't get them. And, and as you mentioned, if they're crushed, we still get them, but not quite as well. Not as so many. Just take the cap off. The same thing goes with your milk jugs. Just take the cap off and we love it. Okay, so those are two, those are two great takeaways. And then I'm gonna have Nathan explain about the cardboard and recycling, because I know that that's something that all of us think we're recycling by putting those in right in, in the trash as well, but there's, there's a different difference there. So Nathan, explain that. So the current market for cardboard is pretty demanding. They want very clean material. Um, so we have found that we cannot recover cardboard from the garbage and make a marketable material with it. So if you put cardboard in your recycling bin, that's great, we'll get it. Um, cardboard in your garbage can, we're probably, it's probably gonna end up in the landfill because it's too soft and soggy and wet. So a couple of options, put it in your recycling bin. Uh, uh, we also have a bin at the landfill now. You're welcome to bring it up to the landfill and, and put your cardboard in the bin up there and, and we'll bring it down and process it. Okay. So just quickly also, just mentioning the landfill, I mean, that to me, as a citizen, this is why I'm really impressed with this recovery center, because by us investing in that, what, over $26 million in this equipment, it's actually gonna preserve our landfill so that then you and I, as citizens, when we're cleaning up our yard and wanna take some stuff to the dump, we can still do that. Otherwise, this facility would have been, we would have been at capacity, what, what'd you say, like in, yeah, closing the burn plant with all the waste going to the landfill, um, we would have been filled up in about 10 to 12 years. So one of the major things we do with this facility is we're, we're diverting waste to uh, 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 actually for recycling or for right. energy production. We're also diverting waste to another landfill, a regional landfill. So we're going to extend the life of that landfill so we can keep doing the other great things we do with that landfill. Our green waste program, mm -hmm. the citizen drop off, the household hazardous waste. So we want to keep that landfill open for the foreseeable future for, uh, uh, for residents to come and, and take advantage of. Oh, and I just thought of any, another thing. We have the store there. We do. We have a, a thrift store at the landfill, so you can come up and see what treasures you can find in the <laughs> thrift store. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed this this tour today and or learned something from it. But Nathan, as you know, Layton City's in our uh, 100th year celebration. Congratulations. Yeah, we're we're loving it. But uh, as a token of that, I'd like to share with you our commemorative oh, coin. Wow. I know you haven't received one yet, but very nice. We have this nice coin that we made for uh, um, a commemorative for our city and our celebration of the 100 years so we just want to say very thank nice. you for taking the time and educating our citizens thank here. you very much and and uh, we're we're glad to be serving late we're glad you're right next door <laughs> <laughs> thank you thanks mayor